Hello and welcome to the next video in the professional VTOL build with Ben up there at 3DXR. This is not intended to be viewed alone, it's part of a series and the series altogether again is not really aimed at those of you that are new to Ardu Pilot, it's really aimed at those of you that maybe had a play before, maybe made your own VTOL and are interested in how a professional does it and how they lay things out. In this video it's more about how the components fit inside the chassis, where the flight controllers put, how Ben does the power distribution, where the GPS is located, some of the other tips and tricks that they've developed over many years and hundreds and hundreds of VTOL builds to make sure that this thing, when it's all ready, will fly perfectly. So enough of me banging on, over to Ben to show us how all this stuff fits inside the plane. Okay, so last time we had a little look at building one of these Make Fly Easy fighter VTOL planes and I showed you this body which has had a little bit of work done to it already. Um, today we're going to show you some of the next stages. So just a little recap of um, the sort of state this one's in at the minute and how it's got to this level. You might notice it's a little bit shiny. And um, what that is, that's a laminate. So that's um, it's actually a paper laminate. So it's something that's applied with heat and trimmed. And we do this on these aircraft. Um, the foam aircraft are great, but obviously they can get a little bit of wear and tear, sort of hangar rash. So this for us is a training VTOL, so we it gets handled, it gets used a lot, so we just want to improve its lifespan. So laminating it is a really nice way to do that. We do avoid some of the really tight curves, so in this case the laminate stopped proud of the nose just because if you try and cover every bit, it, it often gets a bit wrinkly or messy and then it peels away easy. Um, the fluorescent uh, paint, this is um, plastic dip. So we buy it in an aerosol. I believe this color is blaze red. And when you're applying this paint, you actually use the white plastic dip underneath first. And then you use a few coats of this uh, fluorescent stuff and that gives you a good finish. And for a training aircraft, we want this to be highly visible. So we do the sort of tips and the, the, the body tips and the tail tips. We've also stuck on some of the initial plastics and actually stuck the body together. So this, this comes in two halves. Um, the, the very nice, nice fit, lots of locking and locating pins. There's a few fittings that have to go in, some of the recesses for the for parts to be screwed onto. We've got some of the reinforcing plates for the battery here where they get Velcro straps through. In the sort of comms bay here, the bit of wood stuck in there, we've got the two. Uh, center spars and then um, the wing joins and on this particular one we did put a few wires in already so the the kit does come with some wiring and um, we like to sort of cut cable to length and terminate our own ends label them like we have done on here so we'll use our little uh, heat shrink label print there so we can mark what everything's connected into all the foam is glued with yuhu pour uh, por and we use a sort of push and release method and then we tape it up and I like to leave it for a day something like this I'll I'll glue it up one day will will not work on it till the next day and we'll remove any bits of excess and sort of clean it before we then laminate it and and do the next stages so let's have a look at the parts we decided to put into the version we're making um, so as always uh, cube orange flight controller that mounts on this area in this case, we've gone with the heel link. We kind of do a mixture on this one. Sometimes we'll use heel links. Sometimes we'll use a traditional radio like a Tyrannus and then use a telemetry radio like an 868. Um, the heel link gives us the option to put a video on there. So we might put a forward facing camera. Um, what's nice about the heel link, obviously you've got the range. So when you're on a, a larger aircraft like this, so something in the over two meter wingspan, you're the likely sort of area that you're operating is a little bit bigger so we want to be confident that we've got sufficient range and control for where it's going to fly. We also have a here 4 and what we actually do is we, we've decased it and this fits in the back. What's nice about the here 4 is it has the um, premium sort of compass the RM3100 and by mounting this at the back here uh, there is a wooden plate it sits on that keeps us away from all the, the major sources of interference so we're away from any of the high power lines um, and it's a, a good sort of position for the gps as well we've also um, for our particular version we've put in a box we've made 
Now we do have some alternative options for this going forward, but we, we used to make these boxes up. So we have some left. All that is inside this box is um, a traditional sort of dumb PDB. I think these are sort of 200, 250 amp rated. Um, and our hall sensor, so our MAUC 100 amp um, hall sensor for giving us a very accurate current readings and also our voltage readings. So that's essentially hidden inside this box. Um, what I would probably do for some more when we run out of boxes is this is a really nice product from Tarot. It's, um, it branches out from essentially an XT90 into, in this case, 10 sort of XT60 connectors. Um, each socket is sort of 30 or 40 amps rated. So this would be absolutely sufficient in this aircraft. We can go left motor, right motor, front motor. We can put a few different becks on there. Um, so it's a, quite a simple solution and it can be screwed to a plate at the back. You could 3D print a case. So where we're probably going to start to use these going forward for simplicity. We have our space for the front of the batteries. Normally in this aircraft, we use our Gen Zace 16 amp hour 6S. So fairly traditional battery, sort of brick size battery, weigh about two kilos each. So this is our normal battery choice for this aircraft. Um, I know the manufacturers show sort of 22 amp hour. We just find they're, they're very heavy um, in this aircraft. You can also use the solid state batteries. So the, um, we sometimes use a T-motor, a res, and the benefit you get with them is for the same size and weight, you get 22 amp hours in the solid state. Um, there is some drawbacks. They are a lower C rating, but they are compatible with this aircraft. Okay, so here's one we prepared earlier. Um, and what we've done here is we've fitted all the electrical components. So our cube is stuck down. It's been powered by this MAUC regulator. So this is a power cube four. Um, and what this gives us, this gives us power and backup power to the cube. And it also gives us um, a five volt and a 12 volt um, supply. So it's powering the heal link with 12 volts which is a sort of recommended voltage to use. And we have five volt supplies to the servos, um, which goes to the servo rail on the cube. And we do have additional capacity to take power off for other devices. This is running um, 12S. So we sort of double up the batteries together. So that's just a sort of split and a Y lead in the, the batteries over here. Um, the motor is fitted to the bulkhead plate and our speed controller, the Flame 60 is strapped behind. Um, there's quite a lot of nice wire routing methods and wire retention included in the in the kit. So there's these nice screw-on sort of panels, um, and there's these nice routes to run the cables, keeping them tidy and out the way of stuff. There's even the 3D print that encloses the flight controller, hiding almost all the wires. We do a couple of little things ourselves, which is a few reinforcing plates. So we do put an additional plate over the the sort of battery mount and um, an additional plate in the bottom here and the flight controller is on a carbon plate instead of a wooden plate um, and some of that is just a little bit extra sort of strength um, we want to make sure there's no chance of the batteries coming undone and it's just things we sort of learn over time on different different sort of foam kits as to what we can reinforce and um, what we've done for the the heel link so the heel link normally has these two um, sort of uh, panel antennas and um, we've decased those and it's just a PCB antenna inside and we fitted them to the left and right sides of the foam um, and they're just sort of hidden with a bit of tape so you might see this one here and um, they can also be trimmed a little bit as long as you don't cut the actual antenna element on the PCB okay so just to bring your attention back to the, the sort of power box here and why why we sort of do this one great thing about this is that we've left the XT60s here exposed. So during the sort of initial setup and testing process, and even down the line when you're testing, um, you can isolate parts. So I can just remove the connection to the front motor by unplugging that. That makes it safe when I'm doing a sort of bench test. It also helps me, I could do some hover testing without the chance of the front motor coming on by physically isolating it. I can also disconnect my left and right wings this would still be possible by using the sort of turret block as well. It gives you easy access to disconnect motors when you were, say, doing 
servo testing or doing some of your bench setup. So we've left those exposed, we think on, on a training aircraft that works really well. And we have paid a lot of attention into the wire routing. So having our sort of power cables sort of wrapped nicely. Um, we've done sheathing on all of our sort of servo cables. We use a nice um, printable heat shrink to label uh, what everything is. We also use a sort of gummy glue heat shrink um, so it does stick and doesn't slide wherever it crosses through um, any sort of hole or hatch. So keeping the sort of wiring simple and neat like this, just easy to diagnose issues, easy for people to understand. Um, a lot of the wires we will sort of cut to length and crimp ourselves just to get the best sort of fit. Um, we always like to use the best sort of soft silicon wire, so a sort of high strand count um, with a nice outer jacket that sort of cuts and crimps well. And here is the GPS mounted, so on this particular final one we did use the Here 3 Plus. Um, this is attached to a plate we've cut, um, a wooden plate similar to this does come with the kit. And we've just held it down in three places with uh, large, these are M4 standoffs which are, are glued down. We then put the foam cover on top of this so it is hidden from sight. But the nice bit about this is this positioning away from sort of sources of interference. Um, it has a good view of the sky for the GPS, but also the compass isn't surrounded by uh, high current wires that you know just give you these bad results. So we find it's a, a very good place for compass and GPS. And also the, the flight controller back here, we can often use the internal compass in that without any issues because the wire routing is um, away from, from the uh, cube. Okay, so let's have a look at a finished wing. So just like the body, we have used the laminate on the wing. We've got our plastic dip coated um, fluorescent spray where we did a couple of coats of white first and then came out to a fluorescent. Um, what we've actually got here to make a nice neat line, this is a pinstripe. Um, it's actually what people used to use on cars. <laughs> so um, what we find is that neatens up the sort of edge because we use uh, our masking tape. Then um, we have to sort of, because it's very plasticky and stretchy, you have to sort of cut the paint away with a scalpel and then this uh, pinstripe here, a couple of mil pinstripe, really finishes it off. We're able to get quite far to the edge on these before we have to stop the lamination. Um, we've got our stickers on here. Now um, we did catch some of our customers peeling our stickers off and putting their own on. So we now sink them under the laminate to make that really hard for them. <laughs> and what's really important is not to forget this, what looks like a plain white sticker. This is actually a reinforcement. So this comes in your fighter VTOL kits and it's a very rigid um, sticker basically and the idea with that is your VTOL arms you know say if it creates a sort of H shape um, it's to stop this torsional twist and um, so this reinforcement is vitally important a lot of people who say take a standard fixed wing aircraft and want to bolt on arms they're, they're normally very weak and um, so you must have that reinforcement and this simple sticker um, provides a lot of extra rigidity. It's, it's very obvious if somebody has forgotten this. A few of bits which are really nice on this kit. The hinges are reinforced. Um, so we have these drop-in um, plastic hinges here. Uh, they're sort of glued in and they just make this, it never comes off. Um, nice big back plates for the control horns. Uh, we also have um, the, the nice way the VTOL component sticks to the wing. So it's clamped over the two carbon tubes which come in. So it's a nice um, sort of mechanical fit. So if we just have a little look at the rear side, this, this is the underside, the nuts going into those sort of big aluminium bolts. So nice and secure. Um, we have this little access hatch. Now this is where our wiring joins together. So we've got an XT90 connector under there and then we have two servo connectors. So that's what comes in from the wing and then it then distributes down the tubes. So it's quite a nice way to do it. Um, it allows you sort of to make the wing and to make the arm and then make them together. We This would be removable. Okay, you've got a few screws to take out in the thread lock, um, but you could unplug and remove this, this VTOL arm. Um, what they do really well, these, these nice cable runs and access hatches are just sort of so good by the manufacturer of this kit, make fly easy. I really like the control linkages, 
always work. And inside of here is our trusty um, Emacs 3054 servo. We just use hundreds of those. There is a DVLR airspeed sensor, so just a Matic one. And what we have here, um, it's, a, it's a good place on a VTOL when you've got a front motor, is to get the airspeed right out on the wing. So this is just the pitot tube, and all we do here is we just buy sort of aluminium or brass tube, about a two mil hole in the middle, and then we've got our flexible silicon tube into the sensor. The uh, static pressure is taken from inside this chamber as well, and um, this method, it, it works, it does good. Um, just beware, it's a little bit sharp, but it, um, it gives a good clean airflow and gives us a nice accurate airspeed. There is a position to have an airspeed in both wings, so it's it's something you can do you can you can put them in, in either side and have dual airspeed as we touched on in an early video what we're using here is a t-motor arm set there is quite a few options in size um of motor so in this case we've used the v505 so it's a it's a vtol um, 505 and we happen to have a locking version made so um it will lock the propellers in the direction of sort of flight and um, that's done by additional magnets in the motor what's nice about these arm sets is the speed controllers are in the base so it does keep your noise away from um, from all your sort of flight control electronics and um, it does mean you have long DC power lines but we don't see any issues with those with this sort of setup and this you know there's not much sag or anything so this this particular method works um, in our first video, we showed a few options for motors. We also use the 6007s. We also use the factory motors. So there's quite a few different options on the, the VTOL motors you can put on them. With this particular one, the 505, it's a slightly higher KV motor. And what that allows for is a smaller prop. Um, so we can use these with anything from um, a 16 all the way up to a 20 inch propeller depending on your motor combination still have the same level of power but they'll have slightly different characteristics um, and sounds so this is what one of our um, finished wings would look like of our trainer aircraft for our um, fighter VTOL so join us for the next video where we're going to commission and do the final setup of all these electronics we'll also do the um, what I call the indoor um, sort of full test before we venture outside and do a maiden and do some tuning. So we'll be assembling the whole aircraft, going through the final RD pilot settings. We'll be testing motors inside. We'll be just making sure everything does what it's supposed to do before we step outside and fly it. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payment 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.